mentioned the Vision Pro before quickly. Um, that's um, pre-orders went out for that, I believe, next week. Uh, this is all only in America. No other countries are getting them at the moment. And the um, the actual units are going out to people, um, I believe, next week. Um, and then I guess we'll start to see um, use cases develop, I guess, for how people use them. This seems to me the most expensive beta testing um product um that apple or anyone has ever released um you know 3500 us dollars for for one of these things for the base model because you know that's not just the base model of course <laughs> or all the other accessories that you have to buy um i'll get to some of the experiences that have been announced in, in a minute but um the thing that kind of uh, i find funny with this is um is just um it seems like this product it's it's not quite like the iPhone. Like you know, there was a lot of um, you know back and forth when the iPhone came out. Oh, it doesn't have a keyboard, so people aren't going to like touching on a touch screen. It doesn't have um, uh, the apps. Oh, maybe it's good for playing your music, but it's not a good corporate phone. And there was a lot of criticism around that. But that very quickly turned around once it went out into the public. The App Store was introduced, and now, and the rest is history. Now it's the do- like it's a dominant platform is how you would use a phone. This seems doesn't quite seem to have that. Um, look, I might be wrong. Um, it might turn into something. I c- and I think we mentioned before. I I have seen a future potentially, maybe in fifteen years' time, maybe unless they can figure out the technology sooner, where it becomes like a pair of glasses, um, and you know, isn't like you know over half a kilo strapped to your head um but it seems to me that um you know there's a reason why certain you know tech products have lasted the test of time and it's not just because something's old like a a keyboard is a great example why we're still using keyboards would be a, a classic example but there's a reason why we still keep using them so yes they're trying out this um particular product but where it actually goes i think is going to be a long gestating process and it's not going to become i don't think a dominant platform if if at all you know anytime soon well let's face it i mean if we wanted to be brutal we'd just say it's another recycling of 3d experiences you know uh and that's the best use case they've got at the moment i i think you've summed it up pretty well i think the reality i'm a bit more hopeful for it i think they'll shrink it down eventually I think they're probably still very nervous nervous after Google Glass uh, and what happened there, and nobody really wants to see anyone running around with a pair of spectacles with this sort of capability. But I, I think the use case will be augmented. I think what will happen in the future is we'll start wearing these and perhaps the work from home scenario will drive this. So rather than sitting in front of a screen, you know, you can be standing there uh, or sat, sat there with these on your head and, you know, Zooming or you're actually interacting if you're in a work environment, uh, which may be, you know, operational where you're having to make choices uh, in some sort of production scenario, then, you know, these glasses may help keep you safe, help you make the right choices, help you be more efficient. So, but that that's not I guess, this version of the Vision Pro. I'm talking about the use cases down the track, and I think this is the stepping stone. But, yeah, it's um, it really is a product in looking looking for a solution. <laughs> oh, and that's not to say that it's not um, some of the entertainment options on it aren't intriguing. Like the idea that, um, you know, you can, like Disney Plus um, actually um, – uh, expanded its um actual um, interaction in the vision pro app uh version of the app that it's got so um it's not just you're seeing um the ipad version uh you know projected in front of you it's actually an immersive um environment that they've created and um they've also got and they've also got a whole bunch of 3d films in there that um you know that they can um you can it might potentially have a better experience than actually watching it in the cinema because it's such an immersive uh, platform. But even some of the t- like 2D movies, the traditional 2D movies, could be blown up, you know, or give you the feeling that you're sitting in an IMAX size screen um, with these goggles on. And then, of course, there's other things. Like I can imagine that um, there'd be a lot of use cases where you could like be transported somewhere. Um, you know, um, you could walk on the moon go and you know those things that we've talked about before um i think that even the hololens back in the day was doing which was um you know it puts you in you know to other countries maybe if you can't travel or something like that i find that kind of stuff intriguing but it's hard at the moment you know it costs 3500 bucks um and 
it would have to come down a lot um, over the next couple of years for that sort of use case to um, become a bit more mainstream. Yeah, that's why I look to the augmented platforms. It's got to create new value. So I I don't think as an entertainment platform on its own, it creates new value. I don't, you know, anything, any game we can play in 2D, well, you could play it in 3, same with a movie, you could watch it in 2, you can watch it in 3, but it does, does it really create new value? Well, not really, because especially in a movie, it's the story that counts, not the not so much just the uh, visual effects. But I think when it allows me to interact with an environment at a level that I can't presently, then I think it creates value. And that's where I think the augmented, particularly in a professional sense or a work-related sense, that's where I think it really... Uh, has exciting potential as recreation i don't know i just don't know yeah well i guess it's not ready player one um at this stage anyway um although you know we're not living in a post-apocalyptic environment either where we'd want to hide um inside our goggles not yet (laughs) (laughs) 